In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use InDesign to create a gorgeous and editable workbook for your audience. Since InDesign is a pretty beastly program and more advanced, I'm creating this video on the assumption that you know how to use at least the basics of it. I'm going to share with you a few of my favorite tricks to making designing in InDesign so much easier, plus give you this template as a download. I will cover how to make the workbook editable, overriding master page items, and creating styles. Again, this is an advanced video that really focuses on how you can make a workbook, so I'm not going to show you how to set up everything step by step, just the more advanced features. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to talk about is how to create a master page and how you can override it within your workbook. So what you're gonna do is click on pages in this right hand column and you can see here how it says none and then a dash master. That is where the master page resides. So what you're gonna do is double click on it. And as you can see, I've already have a couple things here. The first thing is this triangle and this right here is page numbers. And these are items that I want to a page, or oh, excuse me, these are items I want to appear on every single page in the document. So you can see here is the triangle, here is a page number. Here is a triangle, here is page number, etc. So what you'll do is go into your A-master, put your shapes in wherever you want them, in this case the triangle, and then here is where I want the page number. I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. All right, so I'm going to zoom in so we can see more clearly. Okay, so what you're going to do is create a text box and then you're going to type in the text that you want to show up on every single page. For the page number itself, just you, I just use a capital A. It works. It, it means that's where I'm going to have the page number show up. And then underneath I put copyright teachable in our website so people don't forget who we are. So what you're going to do to actually make this a page number is highlight it and then go into type, insert special character, markers, and click on current page number. That converts it to an actual page number. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this document, go back to pages, and double click on number two. And as you can see, here's the two, and here is my copyright teachable at teachable.com. On this page as well, going back here, this is where you'll want to make sure you format the text, change the colors, change the font, size it, and place it appropriately. If we wanted the page number to be on the left-hand side, just do that. And then go back to here, and you can see, oh, that's a page I override. You can go back onto this page and see that it has been moved to the left-hand side. I don't want that, so I'm just going to do undo it by Command Z, and voila! You have a master page with all the easy page numbers that will show up on every page, plus design elements. So going back to this page, the cover, you can see that there isn't a triangle on this page, and there is no page number, and that's because I've overridden the master page on this singular page right here. So what we're going to do is right-click it. And then all you need to do is override all master page items. And once you click that, it means any of the master page items that are on this page are completely editable. For a better example, I'm going to just scroll down to this second page because I also used, I also overrode the master page items on this page. You can tell that the master page items have been overrode on this page by the box. See here, it's like a, the solid blue outline that matches this text box. Well, on the F pages that have not been overridden, it's that faint dotted line. The reason I had to override it on this page was because I wanted to add an image right here. And when I add the image to this page in the editable sections, it was on top of this triangle and I wanted the triangle to be on top. So I overrode it and brought this triangle to the front by right clicking and going arrange and bring to front and it brought it to the very top above the picture. You can also create more than one master page. Let's say you have two different page styles that you want to use and it's like you're creating a long book or really long workshop or excuse me really long workbook 
and you need two different styles. So all you need to do is go into this pages tab right here and then you can either just hit duplicate master spread and it creates the B master page. You'll, you know, let's say you don't want this, but you want, let's say you want this triangle and you want it to be orange on every page. So what you can do, there you go, let's quick save it and you can see it's the same. So what you can do is take it and see how this has an A. That means that a master page is applied. This has the A, this has the A. Well, if you want, let's say you want to change this number four to be the B, pull it, hold, grab, grab it so it holds, the, you see the hand and it's holding the file and then drag it to your page and now you can see that it changed. And you can go here and now you can see that there's a orange triangle and no page number. I'm just gonna undo that because I don't want it. Um, I'm going to delete delete the master page. So just right click, delete master page. Okay. And then it's taken care of. Oh, let's just make sure it's drag the A back onto page number four so I don't lose it. Um, delete that again. There we go. And that is how you work with the master pages. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make your workbook editable. So I'm going to go to page four. As you can see, this is the first page that I want to have text that my audience can write answers to. So this page is what it's going where they I'm going to have them write in their answers. Let's say I had a question is why do you want to launch your online course? And this is where I want them to put their answer. So in order to make this editable, you'll go into window and you will go into interactive and click on buttons and forms. I already have that over here in my side panel, so I'm just going to click on it here. And as you can see right now, it's the box is highlighted, but there is no form associated with it. So what you're going to click on is type and text field, because I want people to be able to write into here with text. And I like to change it to just say unclick. You can name it. Um, let's say you have a lot of different... Um, text boxes that you're using so you can name it something like question one or you can just leave it as the default and oh I guess that undid the whole thing just leave it as text field eight and then you could put a description down here question one if you want it now this is really really great so what you want to do is click printable so in case anyone prints out their workbook their text will remain click you can see that it's scrollable, so you, they'll be able to scroll, in this case, to the left and the right. But we don't want to do that because we don't want all the text on one line. So what you're going to click on is multi-line, and that is essential. So basically it becomes a paragraph, and that way when it's scrollable, it's up and down, not left to right. And then change the font size. I would dump, dump it down to 10 just so it's smaller, or you can leave it on auto, and it'll auto size to that box. And then that's it. You're done. Oh, this... Let's make that click again, and then that's it. And you know that this is editable, editable because of the blue dotted line around the box and this little icon right here. What you can do is either go ahead and just, let's say you didn't have these extra questions, just copy and paste all of them. So then all the corresponding blue boxes will be editable or just go in, select them all by clicking and holding shift, go into buttons and forms, type, text field, multi-line, size 10, and done. They're all editable now. Quick, let's save it. Okay, so one other way that you can use a workbook and make it editable is either with a checkbox here or a check line, a checkbox where they can add text. So this right here is going to be a combination of this check list item I'm going to talk about and making this portion editable as well. So to make it this checklist editable, what we're going to just use the A. If you click on A on the keyboard, it's going to change the arrow from the black filled in arrow to this white arrow. And this means you can just directly select all of the points regardless. The reason I'm doing this is this is a grouped item just to keep everything in line and keep it easy. Um, when I'm working on and editing it and designing it. So let's go to the A. What you're going to do is select the whole box and go into buttons and forms. And instead of clicking on text field, you're just going to click on text box. And there you go. Now, 
your next thing is going to be on click and so this means if you have this selected it means that it's automatically going to put the check mark in which you don't really want so if we go back in we're going to click on this one because you want it to be blank and when you save it and export this as a pdf when your um, audience clicks into the checkbox saying yes this is something i do or yes this is something i want to do it will automatically add the check there down here same thing you can either pre-populate the check once you make it into a checkbox or and you can also make this a um, a text field whoop, that oops will allow it to have an answer let's say you want them you you know your subline is here is like fill out the list that you want to create they can write out their list here and then eventually when they finish things they can check it off again just by clicking text field it makes it editable make it multi-line in case they have a long answer make the font smaller so more words can fit on the line and you're done very very easy now the last thing i want to cover is this it's going to be a longer list that almost looks like a notepad um, so what you're going to do, oh, first, before I get ahead of myself, this is my favorite, favorite trick in InDesign, and I use it all the time. Basically, here in this, this section of the document, you can see all of the borders, the lines, the columns, the text boxes, everything. To just view the document, how it's going to look in a print preview, all you need to do is click W on your keyboard and everything disappears. So you can see the document as is. As you can see, when I scrolled over, the the blue the text box lines came into view you can't see anything in here like you could before and it's awesome you can still edit everything as needed double click you know let's change the text but it just it makes viewing more clean so going back into this editable view I'm gonna make these two boxes editable as you can see here these ones are it's really easy um, so it yeah, since this is a table that was created, you can't really make the table editable itself. So if you want every single line to be editable, what we're going to go ahead and do is just click on the T, which is the, you know, the text. You're going to go ahead and create, oh, no, create a text box. Do it over here on the side because it's just easier. And then you're just going to drag it into position here, resize it to fit into the box, match it to the other ones, so I'm gonna bump it up a little bit to give it some more space along lines. And now you have a text box. I'm gonna just copy and paste using Command C, Command V. Use the up arrow keys in case you don't wanna use the mouse to grab it, to just to drop it into that same box, align it with this, with the left hand side of these boxes and then center with these, resize it, dragging it all the way so it's just as long as the rest and now you have two di two text boxes now to make them editable just go through the same process click go to buttons and forms type text field let's change this to on click multi line size 10 and you're done do this quick do the same thing so uh, it's matching and you can have your title or your question and then your answer um, multi-line and size 10 and you're done so easy save it and now you have an entire page that people can have like as a list or use it for like a shopping list like say you want them to here's the camera and then this is the link to buy it pretty much you can use it for anything same thing with goes with this box this page down here you can put your question here they have an answer super easy it's awesome that InDesign allows you to do these forms and buttons within one document it makes everything so much more simple now the last thing I just I want to create is going to be setting up a character or excuse me a paragraph style um, it'll just make editing easier as you can see all of these titles are the same on all the pages as is this subhead and are these smaller statements here so let's say you have a bunch of different pages your your workbook's going to be like a 30 page workbook you don't want to be having to format all the text every single time so basically what you're going to do is create a style that means that this type of for this type of heading so the first time you create it let's say this was the first time i created this i formatted it i made it the size i want i changed the color i aligned it in the center this is the font i'm going to be using 
great I have it perfect so what you're gonna do is just have select the box and then you're gonna go into paragraph styles and see here it says basic paragraph and has this little plus sign this means that whatever the default is when you create a text box it's been altered into this and this is what you want to save so all you need to do is click this little button right here that says create new style and then you can see that it drops it down to say paragraph style one so once you click on it this is going to be your new new style that you just created for the title so double click on the name and it'll bring up this I would edit edit it to say just title um, versus paragraph style because if you have like 10 of them it'll be confusing um, just click on title and now there you go let's say if uh, now you can see on this page I want to click this I want to make it a title boom it changes just gonna do undo because I don't have the subhead created but just to walk you through that one more time this is created I love it click up the plus or excuse me click the create a new style double click let's make it subtitle and hit OK and you're good to go let's say you wrote that or you know you created the style and then you're like you know what I want this to be teal you know change up the color add some fun what you can do is click on this you can see next to the subtitle there's the plus it means that specific style has been edited and you can just go into the arrows on the side go redefine style and it now the plus is gone it recategorized this subheadline so instead of everything being like this it will now become they will all look like this the reason you can't see it is because i don't have all these subtitles i do not have the that one style set as a subtitle but that's the general idea of it i'm just going to undo because i really don't want them to be gray because or excuse me green gray looks better and there you have it those are really easy basic things that you can use in indesign to make di designing your workbook easier and faster and mind you these tips work for anything you do in indesign whether it's an ebook a tool kit a cheat sheet a checklist whatever type of bonus content or lead magnet you want to use in design for to th these will work hope you enjoyed thanks